guys, happy Monday, how's it going? I'm back from Hotlanta. We were at the um, Dirty Girl Mudrum, as many of you know, and as you might have noticed, I haven't vlogged since the day before I left, and that's because I am a dumbass. And I brought my tripod, I brought my remote, I brought my USB cord, I brought everything but a camcorder. So I think what this goes down is like the biggest length of epic fails in packing by Kelly Alexa. 2012. At pretty much every trip I'm forgetting something. It's kind of crazy. Um, but we had a blast and you have to forgive me I'm kind of eating while we're talking because what do you think? I just got home last night. I've got two days um, before I leave for LA and I'm in LA Wednesday to Saturday. I get back. I have one day and then I leave Monday for New York. I'm in New York until Thursday. I leave Thursday to go to Boston. Um, we're in New York for a, an event with Fitness Magazine, and then we are going to Boston for an event at Reebok World Headquarters. Very exciting stuff. And then I come home on Saturday, and then I might actually be home for two or three weeks, which will be beautiful. Um, but I'm eating my lunch, which, since I have cleared out most of my refrigerator, and I'm not buying food for probably the next two weeks, I have like five things in there. This was one of them, which I love. You guys know I love so many Morningstar things. I like this, this is just the garden veggie patty. I also like um, their spicy black bean burger. Have you guys tried that? And um, love those um, buffalo wings. Sorry that I'm eating in front of you. But they had those really awesome buffalo wings. And um, when I was having them, see, they're just so addicting. But I go through phases of buying them because I, when, if I have them for lunch, I fantasize about them all day and want them for dinner. And I do have to find another solution because when I buy those, I was dipping them in that um, low-fat ranch, but now that I'm cutting out dairy, I have to find out something else to dip them in. Mm. That's song. Back to Dirty Girl Mud Run. And again, please forgive me for eating in front of you, but I've got like six minutes. Great tunage. Um, oh, this is probably tacky that I'm drinking, isn't it? I love how as my days go on, I have to just deal with more and more douchebags. Life's too short to be going around critiquing people's blogs and their videos about like, why did you say that? Unless I'm talking about murdering children, why don't you just move on? Those are my thoughts. This is my bra that I wore to the Dirty Girl Run. Here's the thing. This has been hand washed. So this is after washing it. First of all, can you see that? I had no idea that mud would like sink in. Can you see that? So these are my really nice, bright, it was bright pink, Victoria's Secret bra. <laughs> Guys, I, I washed it and I'm looking at it going, crap. Now, a couple of things. I'm going to get into what I wore and why. <laughs> the fact that I didn't plan and didn't ask people what I should wear uh, really worked against me. <laughs> not that it, the Dirty Girl Mud Run is great because it's really not about competing. It's really more about the fun, but still. Um, here's my ass. Can you see this? These are my pants, and this is the hay after washing. This is after going in the wash. The hay that is still, I should just bring this. And there's like, yeah, items of hay just sticking in my ass. So, yeah. Um, here's, here's my thing. I got down to Atlanta, and I just, of course, as is typical of my life right now, packing at the last minute, throwing stuff in my bag, and I'm like, I'll just throw a bunch of my workout pants in, because I didn't think I wanted to wear shorts. I thought that shorts, you know, I kept knowing that we're going to be diving into to these pools of mud and stuff, and I thought, oh, it's, it'll get up inside and be gross. So I wore my workout pants, and then at first I thought I'd wear, like, my Nike, um, you know, you've seen me wear Nike tops, but then it just seemed like it was so... I don't know, tight, you know, because they're tight for the girls and such. And so I just wore <laughs> this bra with two, I layered two tank tops on top of it. Now, it wasn't about chafing or anything like that, but here's why it's bad. 
Obviously, I'm sure you can tell, this is a really soft material, it's cotton, and it has some padding in it. So once I dove headfirst into the mud water, this just became like a 10 pound impediment. This just weighed so much. And then I had tank tops on like this, like these tanks from Target, and then they got wet and, and they were like stretching. So this, these tank tops were then past my butt. And then the pants, you know, whatever, this is like a cot. Then the bottom part of this stretched out so much so that it was dragging on my shoes. And then my shoes were filled up with so much water. I kept saying, I'm like, I feel like my, my feet, every time I step that I'm stepping in a waterbed, and then Robin had this really cute outfit and this cute skirt from Reebok, and she was just repelling the water and light as a, light as a feather. And I'm like there, like feeling like the swamp thing. It was just, yeah. So the next time I do a Dirty Girl Mud Run, I'm gonna get a Reebok skirt, and um, I'm going to adjust what I wear, and I will not wear any kind of sports bra like this. I kept wishing, like, I'm like, why didn't I bring my Under Armour sports bras? Because they're not like this and whatever. So, lessons learned. Overall, so much fun, so hysterical to be around all these fun women dressed up in these amazing outfits. It was just a blast. And I will say this, I I didn't think that I, was be as, that I would be as ballsy going up to these, like, you have to climb over walls, like um, um, a wood wall first, and then there's a, a big wall of hay, and then there's, you, you slide into these mud puddles, and then there's climbing down a hill with a rope, climbing up a hill with a rope. And then there's one where it's like you're climbing up ropes. What's the word I'm looking for? A whole maze, almost like a jumble gym, and you're climbing up with ropes and really high. Um, I'll see if I can send you guys some pictures of some of the obstacles, but I was like, what? And of course I was scared at some of them because you get all the way to the top and you're like, that wasn't that bad. And then you're like, oh crap, I have to find a way down. All that said, it was definitely so much fun that I want to do more of the Dirty Girl Mud Runs and I want to do more of some of the other ones. But I have to look into them because I think one of the things I've shared with you guys that I know about me is I like running, but I don't like running um, to the extent where, you know, doing half marathons all the time and training for that. I, I, don't, I don't want to be running six days a week and I don't want to be running where, you know, I have to taper up and down and, and be doing like, you know, eight hour runs on, probably not eight hour runs, but running that long on, on the weekends, like that's not what I enjoy. And I look up to people that do it and I think it's freaking awesome that you do it. That's not what I want to do. I enjoy running, but I really enjoy more bursts of running kind of in the midst of all of this other stuff. Like the, the part that I enjoyed most about the Dirty Girl Mud Run were the obstacles, not necessarily the running in between. But it was cool to just do, you know, what was it, a quarter of a mile, an eighth of a mile in between? I don't know what the, the distance was. But it's just for, you know, what my flow is. My flow is is that I like to run, but I tend to, like I love to get on a treadmill and do bursts of like killer intervals or do, you know, some killer intervals with um, running going, you know, slow, fast, slow, fast, my, like a hit running or a hit workout. And then even just doing the same type of hit style workout, but with walking and doing an incline. So going from no incline to four to 10 to four to 10 to four to eight to four to 10, you know, that kind of stuff. Because then you are just like dripping in sweat and it's really awesome. But we'll have to see. Um, I'm interested to see what kind of um, workout plan that Valerie puts me on. Um, as you know, heading out to LA and, and Valerie Waters agreed that she would help me. Sorry, I'm cleaning up my counter as I'm talking to you. Um, I feel like what I need now at this point is I've really done so well um, cleaning up my diet, um, getting rid of foods that didn't make any sense, adding vegetables and fruits, and I'm eating all the right quality food, but I, I kind of feel like I just don't have a, a plan right now. I know what my goal is, but I don't necessarily have a plan to get there, or at least maybe I have too many plans. I have too many things that I could do, and those of you that know me, any of you that'll watch my blog and see how I ramble on about everything, you realize I have shiny, shiny object syndrome. So somebody can go talk show me like a, a CrossFit style workout and I'll start off doing that. But then I remember, oh, I like kickboxing, so I'll do that. And then I remember, oh, well, I, what about running? And then I want to do that. And then I want to do isolation training. And I tend to just, this is what I'm doing lately. 
I can't, I tend to just, I'm just winging it, you know, and I don't feel like I have this goal that I want to reach of X amount of weight that I want to lose. Um, and yet, am I doing the right things from here to there to, that's really going to get me there most efficiently? Because let's be honest, the, the first goal is to reach my fat loss goal. The first goal is to get back into um, my range of weight that's ideal for me. Then, then I can start to look at my workouts as more um, about sustaining my weight loss and then about maybe adding more muscle, whatever. But until then, I don't want to keep, you know, taking, I don't want to be talking six months from now and going, well, yeah, you know, I'm still, and, and, and look back and go, I'm trying all of this different stuff but I don't really have a plan. I have to have a specific plan of, this is exactly what I'm doing from here on out. So I, I know from someone who's an expert, how much cardio should I be doing? I mean, I'm, I personally, like right now, and I haven't gotten certified, and you guys know I'm gonna be, more details to follow, I'm gonna be getting um, my ACE certification, American Council for Exercise certification, um, this summer. Um, might be before that, but right now I don't. So right now, I'm not a trainer. I don't know how much for my goals, how much cardio should I be doing? How much cardio is too much? When do I venture into overtraining? How much uh, weight training? And if I'm gonna be doing hot yoga as well, you know, I need a plan. I need to know that what I'm doing isn't just kind of like a crapshoot. Do you see what I'm saying? And with my diet, um, I have no doubt that I'm eating great food now. I'm eating great food. You guys know I've cut the coffee, um, I've cut soda, I'm having green tea, I'm having organic eggs, um, I've had oats a couple of times, a um, lot of fish, a lot of roasted vegetables and salads and hummus. But all that said, am I eating too much of that? Here's what I will tell you. I know without doubt that I'm doing too much of, like I'll start the day right with my breakfast, and then I mean, sometimes you guys, there have been plenty of days where I'm not even eating lunch until two, and then I'm so hungry that I'm doing a big bunch of roasted vegetables in the in the oven, putting them on a salad, kind of having a big salad because I'm really hungry. And quite often I do I'll do the salad before I've eaten my protein, and then I'm full. Then I don't want to eat the tilapia. And many a day I have not had my tilapia. So then it's like I'm having a sensible breakfast. I'm having a big salad. Then I'm not hungry till eight, and then I'm eating something random. Is that like a sensible full diet for the whole day? No, it's not. It's good quality food, but it's not. I, I just know without a doubt that I think Valerie's going to look at what I'm I'm doing and and really put me on something strict. That is, you know, I I know I'm going to have to get to eating every few hours, making sure I'm getting my protein. You guys know there have been about three or four weeks here. I cut the whey protein powder, so I don't have my no, none of the shakes that I have in my house right now, I can use to make a protein shake. And that's not what I live on, but it's also something can be a nice quick snack meal, right? So I don't have that. I just came home and for the next two days, you know, I don't even have any eggs. I finished up the last of my eggs before I left. So um, I really just am looking forward to taking all of these good changes that I've made, taking the consistency that I've built back into my life and now having a plan and being able to say, here's what I'm doing for the next 12 weeks. Every single day, I'll report to Val, I'll report to you guys what I'm eating, what my workout is, and I'm taking pictures every day. I'm taking pictures of myself every day, I'm taking my measurements every day, and we're gonna track it because I've made a lot of changes, but I just don't feel like I'm, you know what they say, you've got to have a target and you've got to figure out how you're going to get there. Because otherwise, if you have a target and you're just doing all of these different things, you can just stay in the same place. See what I'm saying? You've got to have a plan that's going to propel you straight towards the target instead of trying this thing that might propel you over there, this thing that might propel you over there, this thing that might propel you over there. I'm doing all of this stuff. I'm kind of just random because I get interested in so many different things, whether it's a workout or a diet or you know some new recipe. And then it's like... What am I doing that, that ensures that I'm gonna get there? It's time to make sure I get there. That's all I have to say. Because it's, I, I don't know what's more frustrating. Is it more frustrating that I look back on the past couple of years and see how much yo-yo dieting I did and how much yo-yoing I did with my workouts? Or is it more frustrating to now be feeling so good about what I'm eating and so good about my workout consistency, but then also going, gosh, you know, that week I did, you know, a little bit more on the cardio side, and that week I did this, and I just, you know, sometimes that's what some people need. Other people are good at winging it. I think at this point in my life, I need something that is a written out plan, um, that is exactly what I need to do for 12 weeks. If it ends up being 16 weeks or whatever to get me there, I think 12 weeks 
could easily have me reach my goal. And then we just move forward and, and take it up a notch. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go finish the rest of my lunch uh, with whatever I have left in my um, refrigerator. And um, that's it, finish up the day. But I hope you guys had a good weekend. And um, thank you all for so many of your nice emails. You guys are awesome. And that motivates me as well. So have a good rest of the day. Mr. Flow, Mr. Flow, and you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.